me, let me say a few words to reiterate my, my warm regards and to say how happy I am to be here with you, to be the first president to visit your country in order to reinforce the relationship between our two countries, between Ghana and Europe, and that's why we will have a, a session with the Dutch Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, and I think that's very important to have, um, I mean, such a working session and a friendly session. And let me say how committed I am to reinforce the bilateral relations between our two countries in the direct line of uh, our discussion yesterday in Abidjan and what I announced in um, Ouagadougou. Je suis très heureux, mesdames et messieurs, d'être présent ici. I hope that the comments I'm about to make will not offend the questioner too much and some people around here. I think there is a fundamental misstatement of the issue in the question. We can no longer continue to make policy for ourselves, in our country, in our region, in our continent, on the basis of whatever support the Western world or France or the European Union can give us. It will not work. It has not worked and it will not work. Our responsibility is to charter a path which is about how we can develop our nations ourselves. It is not right for a country like Ghana, 60 years after independence, to still have its health and education budgets being financed on the basis of the generosity and charity of European taxpayers. By now, we should be able to finance our basic needs ourselves. And if we are going to look at the next 60 years as a period of transition, a period whereby we can stand on our own feet, our perspective has not to be what the French taxpayer decides to do with whatever surpluses that they have in France. They're welcome. They're appreciated, whatever interventions that the French taxpayer through their governments make to us are appreciated. We're not going to lick a gift horse in the mouth. But this continent, and with all that has happened, is still today the repository of at least 30% of the most important minerals of the world. It is a, it's a continent of vast arable and fertile land. It has the youngest population of any of the continents in the world. So it has the energy and the dynamism. We have seen it. These um, uh, young men who are showing so much resilience and, 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 and in, uh, ingenuity in crossing the Sahara, finding ways to go across with rickety boats across the Mediterranean to really, those energies, we want to have those energies working inside our country. And we're going to have those energies working in our countries if we begin to build systems that tell the young people of our country that their hopes, their opportunity are right here with us. Migration and the movement of people is being presented in a manner which suggests that somehow it's a new phenomenon. There's nothing new about it. It's as old as man, the movement of people. And it has always been linked to the same thing. The failure of where you are to provide you with an opportunity, so you move somewhere else. Those of you who are familiar with 19th century European history would know that the biggest wave of immigration in, the 19th, in 19th century Europe, the latter part of it, came from Ireland and from Italy. Waves upon waves, generations of Italians and the Irish people left their countries to seek the American paradise, largely because Ireland was not working, Italy was not working. Today, you don't hear it. Italian young people are in Italy. Irish young people are in Ireland. We want young Africans to stay in Africa. And how are they? And it means that we have to get away from this mindset of dependence, this mindset about what can France do for us. France will do whatever it needs to do for its own sake. 
And when those coincide with us, tant mieux, as the French people say. But our main responsibility as leaders, as citizens, is what we need to do to grow our own countries. What are the institutions that work, that will allow us to have good governance, to have accountable governance, to make sure that the monies that are placed at the disposal of leaders are used for the interests of the state and not for those of the leaders, to have systems that allow for accountability that allow for diversity, that allow for people to be able to express themselves and contribute to fashioning the public will and the public interest. Our concern should be with what do we need to do in this 21st century to move Africa away from being cap in hand and begging for aid, for charity, for handouts. The African continent when you look at its resources, should be giving monies to other places. We have huge wealth on this continent, in our own country of Ghana. And we need to have a mindset that says, we can do it. Others have done it. We can also do it. And once we have that mindset, we will see it as a liberating factor for ourselves. We keep talking about how it was that Koreans, Malaysians, Singaporeans who got their independence at the same time as us. We're told of that at the time of Ghanaian independence, per capita Ghanaian income was higher than that of Korea. Today, Korea is part of the first world. So is Malaysia. So is Singapore. What happened? Why have, did they make that transition? And 60 years after independence, we are where we are. Those are the matters that should concern all of us as Africans, as Ghanaians, and not, when I say so, with the greatest of respect to the French president, I think that the cooperation of France is something that I am, as you know, a strong friend of France. I am uh, Francophile, in the sense. <laughs> so I don't have any difficulty with that. But I'm talking about our own propulsion, what we need to do to get our countries to work so that we can create the conditions that would allow our young people to forego this hazardous effort to get to Europe. They're not going there because they want to. They're going there because they don't believe they have any opportunities in our countries. So that should be our focus. And I believe that with that, that if we change that mindset, that mindset of dependence, that mindset which is contingent on aid and charity, we would see that in the decades ahead of us, the full flowering, of the African peoples would take place. And that new African personality that was talked about at the time of our independence will become real and imminent in our times. That's what I'm saying. I hope that I'm not uh, upsetting the questioner or even some of my friends who are here. But these are my strongly held beliefs. And that is the reason why I've adopted as the slogan of my presidency, of my period in the Supreme Office of Ghana, that we want to build a Ghana beyond aid, a Ghana which is independent, which is self-sufficient, that is capable of standing on its own feet and building its own life. We can do it if we have the correct mindset to do so. Mr. President, those are my contributions. <laughs> If you had need to have the proof that a new generation of leaders in Africa croit dans une nouvelle histoire pour l'avenir et la jeunesse, vous venez de la voir. Pour ceux qui pensaient que ça n'était que les mots d'un président français, français parlant de l'Afrique. Il y a des leaders en Afrique qui veulent une nouvelle relation, qui veulent un avenir pour leur jeunesse dans leur pays, dans leur continent, qui le veulent parce que c'est ce qu'ils veulent écrire. Donc merci pour cela. So, no, we'll, we'll be here forever. We'll be here forever. He has a lot of ideas and a lot of very positive things to say. And as you can see, I have my own things to contribute as well. <laughs> so, um, let, let's bring it to an end. Um, we're going to... M M M M Mr. Macron left Abidjan after a hectic morning. He does not have anything to eat. He at least has to have uh, that side of Ghanaian hospitality. So we're going to be able to leave it for him to go and have some lunch. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.